The Cube presents UiPath Forward 5. Brought to you by UiPath. Hi everybody, we're back at UiPath Forward 5. This is Dave Vellante with Dave Nicholson. Derek Mew is here, he's Automation Product Line Lead for Merck. Thank you, by the way, for you know, all you guys do in the vaccine area, saving yeah. our butts. And Bill Engel is back on theCUBE, he's the director at CGI. Guys, good to see you again. Good to see you, thank you. So Merck, wow, it's been uh, quite a few years for you guys. Take us through, Derek, what's happening in sort of your world that's informing your automation strategy? Well, Dave, I mean, as you know, we just came out of the pandemic. We actually have a, quite a few products, uh, like Gavrio antiviral pill. Uh, obviously, we worked, uh, you know, continue to drive our products uh, through a difficult time. But, uh, you know, it was during these last few years that, you know, we've accelerated our journey in automation. We're about four years plus in our journey. Um, you know, so just like the theme of this conference, we're, we're trying to move uh, towards you know, bigger automations, transformational change, uh, continue to drive digital transformation in our company. Now Bill, you've been on before, but with CGI, well, tell people about the firm, it's not com computer graphics imaging. <laughs> sure, no, <laughs> it's, it's definitely not. So uh, CGI, we're a global uh, consultancy, about 90,000 uh, folks across the world. Uh, we're, a, we're both a product company and a services company, so we have a lot of different uh, uh, you know, software products that we deliver to our clients, such as CGI Advantage, which is a state local uh, government ERP platform. Uh, and so, uh, outside of that, we, my team does automation, and so we wrap automation around our IP and deliver that to our clients. So you guys are automation pros, uh, yes. implementation partners, right? So, so let's go back. Yep. Uh, Derek, you said four years, I think, yep. right? uh, you're in, so take us through, what was the catalyst, how did you get started? Obviously it was pre-pandemic, uh, so it's interesting, a lot of companies pre-pandemic gave lip service to digital transformation, sounds like you guys already started your journey, but we'll, I'll come back to that, but take us back to the catalyst four years ago, why automation, we'll get into why UiPath. Right, so I would say it started pretty niche in our company. Uh, started first in our finance area. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, we were looking in technology, evaluating different companies, Lou Prism, UiPath. Ultimately, we chose UiPath, did it on-prem, to start to use automation in sort of our invoice processing, sort of our financial processes, right? Uh, and then from there, uh, after, it was really when the pandemic hit, that's when sort of we all went to remote work, uh, that's when the team, the COE, continue to scale up. Uh, especially during pandemic, we were trying to uh, automate more and more processes, given the fact that uh, more and more uh, of our workers are remote. Uh, there will be processes, how, how do you do events? Uh, you know, part of our livelihood is, is meeting with and engaging with customers. Customers in this case are doctors and physicians, right? Um, how do you engage with them uh, digitally? How do you you know, you know, a lot of the face-to-face -face contact now have to kind of shift to more digital, uh, digital way. And so, automation was a way to kind of help accelerate that, help facilitate that. You, met, you met, I think you mentioned COE as in center of excellence. Yep. So, so describe your approach to implementing automation. It's, that sounds like when you say center, it sounds like something is centralized, uh, right. as as opposed to a bunch of uh, what we've been hearing a lot about. Uh, citizen developers. What does that interaction we, look like? We do have both. I, I would say in the beginning it was more decentralized, but over time, uh, we <laughs> over the few years, as, as we built more and more bots, we're now at maybe somewhere between four to 500 bots. Uh, we now have sort of internal to the company, functional verticals, right? So there's uh, an animal health, uh, we have an animal health function, so there's, there's a team building, engaging with the animal health business to build animal health bots. There's human health, which is what I work on, as well as uh, HR, finance, uh, manufacturing, research. Uh, and so internally, there's engagement uh, leads. I'm one of the engagement leads that interact with the business. Then when there's an engineering squads that help build uh, and design, develop, and support and maintain those, uh, as well as sort of uh, a DevOps team that supports the platform and maintains all the bot infrastructure. So, you started in finance, it's a common story. Right. I'm sure you hear this a lot, Bill. How did you decide what to target? Was, that, was it process-driven decision? Was it, was it data-oriented, or some kind of combination? Well, how did you decide? Do you remember, or do you, can you take us oh, back so, there? Yeah, so for, uh, for CGI, how we started to engage with Merck is, 
you know, we, we do a lot of other business with Merck. We uh, work in all their different uh, business lines and we, we understand the business process. So we, we knew where there was potential for automation. So we brought those ideas to Merck and, and really kind of landed there and helped them uh, realize the value from automation from that standpoint. Uh, and then from there, the journey just continued to expand. Uh, you know, looking for those use cases that, that you know, fit the mold for, for, uh, for RPA to start, and now the evolution is to go to broader hyper-automation. And, and was it CFO-led into the finance department, and then, or was so, it sort of more bottoms yeah, up? So, so I think uh, it started in, in finance, and, and, but we actually really started out in the business line. So out in regulatory, clinical, uh, that's, that's where we, you know, we have the life science expertise that are embedded, and so I partnered with them to come up with, hey, here's a real solution we could do to, to help streamline, uh, say, uh, submission archiving. So when, when uh, submissions come back from the FDA, they need to be archived into you know, the, uh, their system of record. So that's, those are the types of use cases that, that we helped automate. Okay, so you're saying a, a human had to sort of right. physically archive that yes, and you were able correct. to sort of replicate that. Okay, and you started with software robots, obviously right. uh, RPA, and now, you're expanding into, we're hearing from UiPath this the platform message. How does that coincide, Derek, with what you guys are doing? Are you sort of adding platform? What aspects of the platform are, are you adding? Yeah, no, I mean, we are, uh, we are uh, on-premise, right? So we have the platform, but some of the cool things, we just had another colleague of mine presented uh, earlier today. Uh, some of the cool things we're, we're doing, ephemeral infrastructure. So infrastructure as code, uh, which essentially means uh, instead of having all these dedicated uh, bot machines uh, that, that, you know, because these bots only, in some cases, run 10 minutes and they're done. Uh, so we're, we're sort of doing on-demand, you know, s start up a server, run the bot, when it's finished, you know, kill the server. So we only pay for the servers that we use, uh, which allows us to save a whole lot of money. Serverless bots. So, you, but you're doing that on-prem? So you've no, no. Well, oh, that's cloud. We, 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 we're doing on-prem, but our, our bot machines that actually run the, let's say, SAP process, right? we spin that machine up, it's on the cloud, it runs, it finishes, let's say it's processed in one hour, and then when it's done, we, we kill that machine. So we only play <laughs> for that one hour usage of that bot machine. Okay, so you mentioned SAP. You, mm -hmm. Earlier you mentioned Blue Prism, when you probably sure. looked at other competitors too. You pulled the Gartner Magic Quadrant, blah, blah, blah. You know, to, with, with the way people you know, evaluate technology. But SAP's got a product. Why UiPath? Um, I mean, is it sure. that a company like SAP too narrow for their only SAP? You wanted to apply it other ways? Maybe they weren't even in the business that back then, four years ago, they probably weren't. Right. But I'm curious as to how the decision was made for UiPath. Well, I think you hit it right on the nail. You know, SAP sort of came on a little later. Uh, and they're specific to sort of their function, right? So UiPath for us is the most flexible tool, it can interact by UI to our sales and marketing systems, to, to Workday, to ServiceNow. It it's cuts across every uh, function that we have in the company, uh, as well as you're the most mature. I mean, you're the market leader, right? So right. Uh, definitely you're, you continue to build upon those capabilities and uh, we are exploring the new capabilities, especially being announced today. Now what do you see, Bill, in the marketplace? Because right. Are you are you kind of uh, automation tool agnostic? Or are you more sort of all in I, on I would say we life? are uh, agnostic as a company, uh, but obviously as part of a, as an automation practice lead, uh, you know, I, I want to deliver solutions to my clients that are going to benefit them as a whole. So looking at UiPath, you know, that this platform is, uh, it covers the end end spectrum of, of automation. So, I can go really into any use case and be able to provide a solution that, that delivers value. And so that's, that's where I see the value in UiPath and that's why CGI is, uh, is a customer as well. We automate our internal processes. We actually uh, have, we just launched, you probably saw it in the, in the market last week, an expanded partnership with UiPath. We launched CGI Excel 360. That's our fully managed service around automation. We host our clients' uh, whole UiPath infrastructure and bots, it's completely hands off to them and uh, they just get the value out of nice. automation. Nice, love it. Derek, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned this <laughs> ephemeral infrastructure. Yeah. Sounds like it's also ethereal possibility, possibly. <laughs> you're, saying you, you're saying you have processes that are running on premises, right. but then you reach out to have an automation process run that's happening off-prem, 
and you're and you're sort it's of on the cloud. So so okay. yeah. So we have a in-house orchestrator. So we don't we're not using your sort of uh, on the cloud orchestrator. So so okay. we brought it in-house for security reasons. Okay. Uh, okay. But we use you know uh, so inside the VPN, uh, you know we have these cloud machines that run these automations. So, so that's, that's the ephemeral side uh, okay. of, the, of, of the infrastructure. But is there a financial angle to that in terms of when you're spinning these things up? Or is, is, it, a, is it a pay by the drink or by the, by the CPU hours? Yeah, so, hour so if you can of? imagine, like, we, you know, like I mentioned, we're somewhere between four to 500 bots. Mm -hmm. And every bot has a time slot to run and takes okay. a certain amount of time. And so that's hundreds and hundreds of bot machines that we in the old days, <laughs> have to have to buy and procure and you know staff and support and maintain. Uh, so in this new model, uh, and we're just beginning to kind of move from pilot into implementation. We're moving all all about to this in ephemeral infrastructure. Right. So these okay. these machines, these bot machines, are you know spun up. They run the they want they run their automation and then they spin down. But just to be clear, they're being spun up on physical infrastructure. That is in within that, that your is, purview. They're spun up on a AWS. Yeah. Okay. And okay. And they spin down. Okay. Got it. Got it. Interesting. Four to five hundred bots. It, it, you know, Daniel, at one point, he lay out this vision of a bot, a chicken in every pot. I called it a bot for every employee. Is that where you're headed, or is that kind of in this new ephemeral world not necessary? It's like maybe every employee has access to an ephemeral bot. How, how are you thinking about that? That's a good question. Uh, so obviously the, the four to five hundred is a mix of uh, unattended bots versus attended bots right. that, that we also have a citizen developer uh, sort of a group, a team. Uh, mm -hmm. We support that as well from a COE. Um, so, you know, we see the future as a, a mix. There's, there's a spectrum of we are the professional development team. Uh, there's also we support and nurture the uh, personal automation and we provide the resources to help them build uh, smaller scale automations that help you know, reduce the you know, the mundaneness uh, and the hours of their own tasks. But, you know, for us, we want to focus more and more on building bigger and bigger transfer transformation automations that really drive process efficiencies and, and savings. And what's the, what's the business impact been? You mentioned savings, or maybe there's other sort of productivity. How do you measure the benefit, the ROI, and, and can yeah, you quantify we, that? You know, I, I, don't, I don't profess, uh, <laughs> I don't think we have all the right answers, but yeah, uh, simple metrics like number of hours saved, or other uh, sort of excitement, uh, sort of like an NPS, internal uh, NPS, uh, di between the different groups that we engage. Well, we definitely see automation uh, demand coming from our, our functional teams going up, uh, driving up, so it's, uh, it's continued to be a hot area, and uh, hopefully we, we can, you know, like, like what the key message and theme of this, uh, <laughs> of this conference, essentially we want to take uh, and build upon the, the good work that we've done in terms of RPA, and we want to drive it more towards digital transformation. So, Bill, what are you seeing across the, your customer base in terms of, of, of ROI? I'm not looking for percentages. They're, I'm sure they're off the charts. But in terms of, you know, you can optimize for fast payback, you know, maybe lower the denominator, you know, uh, or you can optimize for, you know, net benefit over time. Right. You know, uh, what are you seeing, what are customers after? They want fast payback and little quick hits, or are they looking for a sort of a bigger enterprise-wide impact? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's the latter, it's that larger mm -hmm. impact, right? Obviously, they, you know, they want an ROI, uh, and just depending upon the use case, it, that's going to vary in terms of the, the benefits delivered. And uh, a lot of our clients, depending on the industry, so in, in life sciences, it may be around uh, you know, compliance, like GXP compliance is huge. And so that may, may not be much of a time saver, but it ensures that they're, they're running their processes and they're being compliant with you know, uh, federal standards. So that's, that's one aspect to it. But you know, to um, you know, a, a bank, they're looking to reduce their overall costs and, and so on. Uh, but yeah, I think I think the other the other part of it is, you know, impacting broader uh, business processes. So taking that top-down approach versus kind of bottom-up. You know, doing ta you know the, the onesie twosie tasks is not as impactful as looking at broader across an entire business process and seeing how we can impact it. Now, Derek, when you guys support a citizen developer, mm. how does that work? So, hey, I got this task I want to automate. I'm going to go write a you know, software robot, I'm going to go do an automation. Uh, do I just do it and then throw it over the fence? Do you guys do it? You guys send me a video on how to do it? Uh, no. Hold oh. my hand, how's that work? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, good question. So, so we obviously direct them to the uh, UiPath Academy, uh, get some training. We also have some internal training materials to how to build a bot sort of internal in, inside Merck. Uh, we, we go through, uh, we have <laughs> write-ups and SOPs on uh, using the right framework uh, for automations, uh, using the right documentation, PDD kind of uh, materials, and then ultimately, how do we deploy a bot inside the Merck ecosystem? But yeah. I, I, maybe I'll just add, I think you asked the point about uh, ROI before. Mm, yeah. I'll also say, you know, because we're, we're a pharmaceutical company, I think one of the other key metrics is actually time saved, right? So if, if, if we have a bot that helps us get through the clinical process or even the getting a, a label approved faster, even if it's eight days saved, that's eight days of a product that can get out to the market faster to, to our patients uh, and, and healthcare professionals. And that's, that, that's immeasurable uh, benefit. Yeah, I bet. You can compress that elapsed time of, yep. of getting approval and so forth. All right, guys, we've got to go. Thanks so much. Congratulations Great. on all the success. And appreciate you sharing your story. Thank Thanks, you so Dave. much. Appreciate You're it, welcome. Dave. Appreciate it. All right, thank you for watching. This is Dave Vellante for Dave Nicholson. The Cube's coverage, two-day coverage. We're here in day one, UiPath Forward 5. We'll be right back, right after this short break.